Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and in this video, we're going to be going in depth into the particle emitter object. So, to begin with, we'll add a new object and select particle emitter. I'll start by changing the particle type. You can select circle, line, or image. I'm going to start with an image, and for that image, I'll pick the player character. When we scroll down, you'll see a lot of different numbers I can tweak, and I'll explain each one as we need to for that particle. So I'll place this particle into the scene and preview the game. By default, particles are set to fade from red to yellow and fade out over time. They also start with a 90 degree spray cone and facing to the right. So if we open the particle up, we can change the start and end colors, but if we want the sprite to stay the color that it is, we need to change it to white. Next we can change the minimum and maximum force that the particles are given. We're going to change both of those to zero. And instead, to give the particles a movement, we'll change the gravity in the y-axis to 80. You can do this as well for the x-axis, and both numbers can be positive and negative depending on which direction you want them to go. Next we can change the particles minimum and maximum lifetime, which will determine how long until the particle fades away. And then we can change the minimum and maximum rotation speed of the particle. In this case, giving it negative 200 for the minimum and positive 200 for the maximum. And then we'll change the radius of the emitter, which will determine how far away from the center point of the particle that these particles can spawn at. And then if we change the flow of particles per second down to two, but leave the number of particles at negative one, we'll have an infinite number of particles spawning at two particles per second. So if we preview the game now, we'll see a bunch of little alien people falling to their death. Now, we're going to try to make this particle a death particle. So when the character dies, this will spawn in their place. So we'll change the radius to zero, and we'll change the spray cone angle to zero as well. That way when the particle spawns, it will always be upright. Now we'll change this particle's name to death, and change the number of particles in tank to 1, so only 1 spawns. And then, because we have this checkbox up here checked off, after that one particle spawns, it will delete the particle object. Now we'll go to the event sheet, and I'll show you the randomizer event that I'm using from the changing animations tutorial. Basically it picks one of the random animations of that object, and then turns on and off the platform behavior based on which animation was chosen. And here we have an event where the condition is if the player is in collision with the object, with sub-events relating to all of the different animations. So we want to put a death animation in when the player hits a spike. So we click to add an action, type in create, and then create an object, search for death, and then type in player, and then center, and select center x. And then do the same thing for the y position, but with center y. And then we need to move that above the positioning event, so the particle spawns and then the player moves. And now if we preview the game, I can press F to randomize all of the objects, and I'll try to get this to turn into a spike. And... And you'll see when the character runs into the spike, it creates the particle where the player was, and then moves the player back to the starting point. Now let's create another kind of particle for the diamond. We'll select the image, change both the colors to white, change the initial opacity to 255, so it starts as a solid object and then fades to nothing. We'll change the number of particles in tank to 1 again, change the min and max forces to 0, spray cone to 0 again, and we'll change both the minimum and maximum lifetime to 1, so each time it's the same amount. And this time we'll change the particle start size and end size by making the end size twice as big as the start size. And then if we go to the event sheet, we can copy and paste the last particle action down, this time changing it out for diamond instead of death, and changing the position to the position of the object. And then adding once, so it only spawns the particle one time. And now if we preview the game, and run into a diamond, you'll see it kind of expanding outwards. Next we'll create one for the heart, using a lot of the same settings as the diamond, so we'll just duplicate the object and change its name to heart. Changing the image to a heart, changing the number of particles to 6, 
changing the gravity in the y-axis to negative 10 so it actually floats upwards, and the radius of the emitter to 5, so you get a little bit of spread, and changing the particle's start and end size to 50%. We can again copy and paste down the event, and the once, changing it to heart, and you'll see it spawns a bunch of little hearts when you run into the heart object. And now we're going to try to make one more particle, this time using lines. So we'll call the particle spring, select lines as the type, change the spray cone to 135, change the radius of the emitter to zero, change the colors to something red, and change the number of particles to 30. And then change the particle end size to 50, so the particles will shrink as they get older. So I'll create a sub event to the bouncy thing event, give it trigger once, and then create object, changing that to the spring, and then we'll add the action to rotate the spring to negative 90, so it'll face upwards. So I kind of threw that out and put the dust particle in there instead, changing the Z order to be behind the object, and then using the shake object extension to give it a little wobble when you hit it. And one last thing, this option right here, this checkbox, additive rendering, that works the same way as the add blend mode works. So it'll take into account the colors that are behind it and mix the colors together to determine the color of the actual particle. You can create some really cool particles with this system. I'll leave a link down below to Wishforge's particle example. But this has been a tutorial on the particle emitter object in GDevelop. As always, comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.